evening to evening, Friday night to Saturday night. That's the Sabbath. What's your name, brother? What's your name? Trey. Trey? All right, Trey, let me know once you see your forefather on this side. Who do your fathers descend from? I, Judah? All right, good. So the greatest man to ever walk this earth that every Sunday they read about, Jesus Christ, also come from the tribe of Judah. That's your cousin. That's who came to die for you. He ain't come to die for everybody on this earth. And we're just reading. And we're reading that right now. Read, read this again. And matter of fact, no, read that Sabbath. Because there's laws that if we broke, we couldn't be justified underneath the law of Moses. The job was that we had to get put to death. Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. So he was working on the Sabbath day, which we're not supposed to. Read. Verse 33. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and, and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. So this is the first, the first time the Sabbath is being introduced to the children of Israel. And he's saying, look, he's picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. The Lord ain't tell us what to do. Let's hold him in. Basically, they put him in a holding cell. And now they went to inquire of the Lord, what must we do to this man? Because he was working on the Sabbath day. You got that, uh, Andre? That's your name, right, Andre? Trey. My bad, Trey. So now we're reading, if you've been breaking the Sabbath day, what would have happened to you underneath the law of Moses? Read. Verse 35. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. So according to the law of Moses, if you was breaking the Sabbath, what would happen to you? You'll be put to death. So some of y'all may have not known what the Sabbath day was. Y'all might have been breaking it. Meaning if you work on Saturday, you've been breaking the Lord's Sabbath. And what, according to the law, what must happen to you? You have to be put to death. But with Christ dying, you're able to repent of that. Meaning you're able to correct it. Meaning when Christ returns, if you've been breaking the Sabbath and you got it corrected, you're not going to get put to death. Because you knew, look, I have to change. I have to make it right with him. This is another law. Give me the one, um, adultery. Adultery. So this is another one that it plagues our community. Because it's hard for us men, right? Be honest, men. Is it, is it easy to stay with one woman? Trey. All right. Lewis, is it easy to stay with one woman? It is? Have you had multiple partners? I ah, see. Ah, you see that, right? You see that? Come on, bro. Don't play us. We men too. Come on, bro. It's not easy. It's not easy. Re exactly. Read this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 10. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, both the man and the woman, read, shall surely be put to death. This is the things that you couldn't be justified underneath the law of Moses. If you've been doing that, you have a chance to do what now? Repent. Bring it up. Meaning get married, stop sleeping around, stay with that one person. That's what God is letting, is allowing you to do now. That's what Christ came to do. When he died, he died for us to be able to repent of those sins that we were supposed to be put to death for. Because I know before I found out the truth, I was breaking the Sabbath. I was a whoremonger. I was stealing. I was lying. I was doing all the above. And some of you have been doing the same thing. Now you have a chance to repent. After this walk, after you leave from here and you continue doing what you've been doing, there's no more sacrifice for your sins anymore. The only person that's going to be able to be put to death is you. You can't bring a, a bull or a goat to get a sacrifice anymore. You're that sacrifice now. Watch this. Read that. Hebrews chapter 10. And then we're going to go and prove how we know that you guys descend from the children of Israel. This ain't no joke. We've been lied to our whole entire lives. We've been hoodwinked. We've been tricked thinking that we just Negroes. That we would just put on cargo slave ships, brought here as slaves, and that's it. That's, that's, that's just our history. February Black History Month, that's it. Before that, we was ruling the whole entire earth. People came to us for wisdom. People paid taxes to us. Just like you're doing to the, these Caucasians today, they were doing it for us. Read that. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. No, Hebrews chapter 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hebrews 
chapter 10 and verse 4. Uh -huh. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats. So back then we had to bring a goat or a sheep for our sacrifice. But it was certain sins that we committed that we was able to bring those sacrifices for. The other sins such as adultery, what was the sacrifice? Death. You had it been put to death. If you committed, if you brought the Sabbath, what was the sacrifice? You, you had it been put to death. So read that again. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, who's he that came into the world? Christ. Read. He saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. That body was his body. He died for that way we can repent of our sins. Read. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. So God had no pleasure in those bulls and goats. He don't want that. He wants you to repent. He wants you to make yourself right. Because watch this, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Let me ask y'all a question. Can you be perfect? All right. Can you be perfect? Can you be perfect? All right. So, all right. So watch this. So we're going to read in the Bible of people who are perfect. Hey, hey, watch this. I'm, I'm gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna break a couple of things down to you. Read that. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Is Jesus Christ a liar? No. I'm asking you. I don't know yet. Is Jesus Christ a liar? How about you? All right. All right. Show, show him the Bible. Show him the Bible. When it's written in red, who's that speaking? That's Christ. All right. Let's read that. Matthew chapter five and verse forty-eight. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So, he, Christ said, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. If he's telling you to become perfect, and we know he's not a liar, then there's a way to become what? You got it. Songs 19 and verse 7. Songs 19 verse 7. So God is letting you know there's a way to become perfect. Some of us think, that once you fall, oh, see, that's the end of it. No, because watch this. Practice makes what? We believed that in school. We believed that when we went to them tryouts. We believed that when we wanted, when we had them NFL dreams, them NBA dreams. We believed in that. But now when it comes to God, nah, we can't be perfect. Nah, bro. Nah. You see what I mean? You see, you see the trickery, right? There is a way to become perfect. Let's read that. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. When you're keeping the laws of God, you're perfect. Right now, these men in purple and gold, we are at our perfection. We're not falling right now. We're good. We're perfect as right now. We're perfect. We're keeping all of God's commandments. Watch this. Are we breaking any of God's commandments right now? Bring it out. You don't know. You have to know God's commandments in order to know if we're breaking them or not. Watch this. This is something to to help y'all become perfect. Finish reading that again. Converting the soul. Read it from the top. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Uh -huh. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. Making things hard to be understood easy. Because watch this. Numbers 15, 38. You remember that kid that was picking up sticks on the Sabbath and had to get put to death? God instituted a law for us to remember how to keep the commandments so that way we could become what? Perfect. Watch this. So, this is something that y'all missing in y'all perfection. Read that. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. It says, speak unto the children of Israel. God's chosen people. And do what? And bid them, force them, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. As you can see in everybody's border of their garments at the end of their clothing, you see fringes. Read. Throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. You see the example, right? A ribbon of blue on top of the fringe throughout our generation. Meaning as long as we keep having kids, we must be doing what? Applying this commandment. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. 
So when we do put on fringes and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, we're striving to be what? Perfect. So watch this. This is a this is a law you may not have known about. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Now this, you're an aged woman. So there's women in the community that look up to you. You have a daughter? No, son. Oh, you have sons. Oh, just one. You just have one. But there's, you have sisters? Younger or older? Younger. All right. So just like me, I'm an older brother. I have younger siblings. I got two older, a brother and a sister. But I'm that example for the younger ones, right? So same thing with you. In your community and your sister, they're going to see you as an example. What changed her life? Why she's doing this now? So this is a law. And mind you, brothers, beware of this because y'all may have been seeing this on the news, on, uh, on articles, Facebook, Twitter. Y'all going to peep this. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. It says the woman shouldn't wear what belongs to a man. We're going we're gonna to skip this part just for a bit. We're going to touch the men first. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What is a woman's garment that a man is not supposed to wear? A dress. What else? You peep that, right? So, uh, so watch this, right? No, 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 wait, wait. Go ahead. The young thug, right? Yeah. All right, all right, so. Hey, hey, don't go nowhere. Attention, Israel. Subscribe to our new YouTube page, IUIC Events 2, for Shout Out Tuesday, exclusive videos, and backup content. Remember, our enemies want to stop this truth, so subscribe here to stay aware. Our content is also readily available on IUIC TV. The time is short, Israel. Subscribe now. People move. When people move off the scriptures like that, we start looking at you suspect, bro. Hold on. Hold on, bro. I got I got I gotta bring this out for you just in case, bro. Just in case, just in case, just in case. Because look, in society today, right? All right, all right. Just, but just, but just peep this out, right? Because what's going on, right? As you can see, in the back in the days, right? Our women were in dresses, right? Peep. Eventually they started when you went to a certain clothing store, sis, what did they start having in your eye? pants but you remember originally pants were for men women weren't wearing pants trousers they weren't wearing pants so eventually what what is gonna happen to this to this new generation where you see rappers wearing dresses celebrities wearing dresses make it to a style yeah they're trying to defeminize the men eventually right eventually since what's your name Crystal, eventually your son, when he grows up, he's going to have to deal with going to Marshall, seeing dresses in the men aisle, saying that these dresses are made for men. That's what's going to happen. Just like they did it to y'all, they're going to start doing it to us. And eventually it's, because it's going to become the norm. Well, a brother, you're going to see a big, thug brother in a, in a mini dress. And they're going to, hey, that's hip hop. Yo, that's, that's the new style. Exactly. That's what I'm. This big is, niggas, big niggas. So think about this. It's normal for y'all now that it's okay for y'all to wear short shorts. It's okay for y'all to wear pants. It's normal. Eventually, it's gonna be normal for men to put on a dress. They already got y'all. So let's read that scripture again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So remember, you have to become perfect, right? So this is a law according to the word of God. Right. He says the woman should not wear what belongs to a man. Right. So when you're breaking God's law, that is called what, sis? It is called sin. That's right. So now, examine yourself, right? Because you, you go to church, sis? All right, let's read that. Romans 6.23. We're going to read that first. This is something that is read in church all the time. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. No, it's life. Is death. Y'all get paid? And when you get your check and it says wages, right? That's what you earn for what you did, right? So God says when you commit sin, what you earn is what? Is death. That's what you're going to earn. So if you're wearing pants, what is your wage? Bring it out. Bring it out. You guess? 
That's what the Bible is. That think about it. This ain't what I'm saying. You remember they say you want to hide something from a Negro? Put it in a book. Right. So in order for us to escape death, you remember all we have to do is what? Repent. That's all we got to do, and we can make it to the kingdom of heaven. This is the thing. They make sure that you don't know your history. They that they, they make sure that you don't know that Jesus Christ came for y'all, so that way you can remain in sin and keep you in captivity. As long as you remain in sin, guess what? They continue ruling. The moment you start repenting and us as a nation come together, keeping God's commandments, Christ returns. That's the whole thing. That's why it says the kingdom of God is within us. We can make it happen just by applying God's commandments. Now watch this, right? So back to Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. So what must you do now? We're dressed all the time. I got a wife and a daughter. Some of these men got wives and daughters. Right. Guess what? They wear dresses all day long. That's right. The leggings go underneath. Now, think about this. Y'all sisters, right? And we men, be honest, men. When them women wearing leggings, do we look at them and be like, yeah, that's, that's wifey material. <laughs> and, and this, these are men. These are men in your neighborhood. Yeah. These are men in the community. When our women wearing tight pants, wearing leggings, what is our thought when we see it? We look down on them. We, exactly. We look down on them. We look down on them. We look at them, hey, man, that's just another body count. Well, you know what's crazy, though? Go ahead. I'm, like, not saying that the man is right, but when you see, like, like a girl with, like, with, with clothes, like, revealing, yeah. shorts on, yo, 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 mom, Yeah. They get mad. But look what you got on. Right. Feel me? All right, but see, that, that plays on both of those, though. Yeah, but check this out, though. As men, right? Yeah. If we start ignoring these women that be dressing like hoochie mamas, right? Yeah. Guess what? They're going to start having more respect for themselves. Because they're going to start noticing like, yo, why the men ain't hollering at us no more? Because we don't like what y'all got on. Yeah, and I can't have a wife coming outside in leggings, short shorts, and all types of men trying to put down on them. Because eventually, what's going to end up happening? That dude that has more than me, that's doing a little bit better, he going to get her. And it's not like you didn't try to hey, stay back. You you're wanting it. You're making you're making these men attractive to you. Cause watch this, right? Timothy's first Timothy's two and nine. How's it going, sis? What's your name, sis? Denise. 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 All right. So Denise, right? We got Denise, Crystal, and Lita. All right. So now what we're going over is that we're the children of Israel according to the Bible. God gave us His commandments to keep, but we broke them, and we and the result is that we went into slavery. So God says that we have to come back to him and we have to be perfect. Being perfect is keeping the, uh, the commandments of God. That's how you become perfect. So watch this. This is a law that we just read on how to become perfect. A woman shouldn't wear what belongs to a man and a man shouldn't put on what belongs to a woman. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Strong in the Lord, his voice.